When you're working and saving for retirement, it's a good idea to get as much money as you can into your IRA or your Roth IRA, but there could be times where you put in too much. That is called an excess contribution. And you will be subject to a 6% tax penalty on the excess contribution until you remove it. A lot of people don't know how an excess contribution occurs. And so I want to talk about some of the ways that an excess contribution could occur. First is, you could just end up putting in more than you're allowed to put in. Let's say that you have two different IRAs at two different custodians. And early in the year, you put in your annual limit to one IRA. And then at the end of the year, you put in your annual limit to the other IRA. You forget whether what you put in early in the year was for this year, or maybe even just forget about it completely. You would then have an excess contribution because you've put in more than the annual limit that you're allowed to have for that year. So you'd have to remove that. Uh, and if you do that before tax time, then you don't have that 6% excess contribution tax penalty. A second way that you could end up with an excess contribution is if you're trying to max out your Roth IRA, but you end up with too much income. A Roth IRA has an income limitation, uh, and once your modified adjusted gross income reaches the bottom of a phase out range, then your Roth IRA contribution becomes to be limited. And at the top of the phase out range, you can't put in any Roth IRA contribution. So if you're putting in a Roth IRA contribution, then, and your income is over that modified adjusted gross income threshold, then you're going to be putting in an excess contribution. A third way would be if, if you just didn't have enough income. What if your income is high but it's actually coming from passive sources. You could have income from rentals, uh, it could be from other investment sources that you have, or you could have already turned on some pension and social security depending on your stage uh, in life. And those sources of income are not considered earned income. So they don't count for the income that allows you to make the IRA or the Roth IRA contribution. Fourth, you could have a failed rollover. And a failed rollover would result in an excess contribution. Now, there are a lot of different ways to move money from one tax deferred account, like a 401k or an IRA, to another tax deferred account. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that is through this 60 day rollover, where you receive money from that account. The 401k sends you a check or an IRA sends you a check and before 60 days have passed from you receiving that check, you turn around and put that money into a different account or maybe even back into the same account. But you put the money back into a tax deferred plan before that 60 days is up or you put it into a Roth IRA. Maybe you're doing a Roth conversion and you're doing it in that manner. But you have to get the money into the new account before the 60 days has expired. If you go beyond the 60 days and then put the money into the new account where it's going, then you will have a failed rollover and that will be an excess contribution. You also cannot roll over required minimum distributions. So when you're doing a rollover, if any of that money is a required minimum distribution, you have to take that money out to you first. You can't roll it over because uh, that money has to come out to you in that year. Last but not least, you could end up with a uh, excess contribution if you don't handle your inherited IRAs properly. When you have an inherited IRA, that inherited IRA has to stay separate from your IRAs. You cannot combine those, you cannot commingle them, and you cannot put contributions out of your earned income into an inherited IRA. The inherited IRA has to stay just the amount that you inherited minus whatever you take out over time, uh, that has to stay in its own separate account. 
And if you do otherwise, if you add it to your IRAs, then it becomes an excess contribution. Now you can correct excess contributions when you catch them. There are, there are ways to correct that. You can take uh, the excess contribution back out of that account right away. Uh, and as soon as you do that, then you're no longer subject to that 6% tax penalty. Now, some of the um, things that you'll want to know is what are this year's limits? Uh, what is the phase out range for Roth IRAs? What are the limits for contributions? And you can get that information on my website. There is what we call a key financial data sheet free to download. You don't have to enter an email or anything uh, like that. You can just go to the website and download it. Navigate to www.bestpathadvisors.com and then you'll see the menu that says menu item that says good stuff and under the good stuff scroll down to free guides and checklists and there at the top of the free guides and checklists you'll see this key financial data uh, and we always put the current year out there so that you can always find that because we want you to have the information that you need to be on your best path for your retirement.